Hello, I'm Mark in the Cloud, and in today's video, I'm going to give you the ultimate DevOps skills roadmap to help you get that first DevOps role in 2024. If you're new here, my name is Mark, and I changed careers in 2019 at the age of 33 and got my first role as a DevOps engineer. Since then, I've progressed through the ranks from junior to mid-level to senior, and now I'm a DevOps manager. I've put together this roadmap to help you get on the same journey as me. I've given you all of the baseline skills required to get your first junior DevOps role. And I believe with the right courses and structure, you can do this in 12 to 16 weeks to give you that baseline knowledge ready to start applying for roles and building your projects. Step one in the roadmap is to learn Linux. Linux is important because most of the virtual machines and compute resources you're going to use in the cloud will be backed with a Linux machine image. So it's important to be able to use the terminal to navigate through the operating system and figure out where to go for the right troubleshooting, looking for logs, where things might be installed, check in for system resources and things like that. Following on from that on step two, you should move into bash scripting. So when you're using the Linux terminal, you're actually writing bash commands. And so it makes sense to then build on that and just automate some of the repetitive tasks that you're doing into a shell script, which you can run on any Linux machine and you know exactly what result you're going to get. After that, you should put some focus into Docker and Docker containers. Docker is the industry standard now for containerization. It allows you to package up your software into a known configuration and you can run that anywhere that Docker is running and you know exactly what's going to happen every time. Step four covers a scripting language, Python. Now Python is a fully fledged programming language, but in DevOps, you mainly use it for scripting and writing things like lambdas and functions to run in the cloud. Now we do have bash already covered, but Python just allows you to go a little bit further, has some great libraries that interact with all of the cloud platforms. Step five on your roadmap is basic networking. So for the most part, the cloud providers handle all of the networking for you, but it's good to understand what's going on under the hood, how traffic is routed between various instances and services that you might be using in the cloud. Finally, you're halfway through the roadmap. Step six, learn a cloud platform. Now, I've spent four years working with AWS, which is Amazon Web Services, but some of the other major players are Microsoft Azure and Google Cloud Platform. There are other smaller vendors, but they are the major players. AWS is by far the market leader, but Microsoft Azure is catching up. So if you choose one of those two, you won't go too far wrong. And for step seven, we're going to look at something called infrastructure as code. So Terraform is the industry standard for this, but there are other variations as well. It can be all too tempting to use the user interface or the consoles to create your resources. But a big part of DevOps is repeatability. And so by writing Terraform and infrastructure as code, it allows you to build the infrastructure the same, exactly the same over and over again. Stop number eight on our roadmap is CICD. And that stands for Continuous Integration, Continuous Delivery. Now, a good platform for this is Jenkins. A lot of people don't like it, myself included, but it's open source and really easy to get working on your local machine. A lot of companies I've worked at, in fact, three of the five that I've worked at so far have all used Jenkins. And so it's still a key skill despite people's reservations about it. There are many, many other CI/CD platforms out there, but it's a good open source piece of software that you can practice free of charge. Step nine is a configuration tool called Ansible. Now Ansible allows you to write a configuration file, provide it a bunch of hosts, and it will go and set that configuration on all of your hosts. It's a huge time saver, gives you that repeatability that I discussed earlier, allowing you to affect multiple machines in exactly the same way at the same time. So that's it, nine steps, nine technologies, things you're gonna to need to know as a DevOps engineer. If you can get those, that foundation knowledge and get that under your belt, be confident in it and then enable yourself to build projects that you can show to prospective employers, you'll be on to a winner. So I would advise once you've learned all of that stuff to build a project that utilizes all of it. So create a huge project, store it in GitHub, and then make use of Python, bash scripting, Ansible, Jenkins, deploy it into the cloud and just make sure that you've got all bases covered. Good documentation is also important you want to give yourself the best possible chance when applying for these jobs. It's a cutthroat world at the junior level. And there's a lot of people going for those roles. So to set yourself apart from everyone else, the projects are the way to do it. Best of luck on your journey. If you've got any questions, let me know in the comments below. Otherwise, I'll see you in the next video.